In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> One of the things that I like to do, and I find myself doing it a lot, is I make little notes. If I hear a story or a song, or I see something different, I write it down. And I always think, maybe I could use this in a sermon someday. So I heard a story recently, and I've really wanted to share it with you. And after reading the gospel, I thought, well, you know, it is Father's Day, so this is the day. Here I go. My sister and I went on the Broadway cruise this past March. It's five days of Broadway, show tunes, singing, concerts, performances. And one of the stars was a man named Cheyenne Jackson. And he's been around for a bit. I've seen him on television. But I had no idea of his lengthy Broadway resume or how beautifully he could sing. So his concert was a pleasant surprise in more ways than one. There was one song that he had written himself, and it was simply titled, OK. Before he sang, he told us the backstory to this song. Cheyenne Jackson grew up in the woods of northern Idaho. And when he was a kid, he had no running water, and they used an outhouse. And Cheyenne always says, my mother gets so mad when I tell this story. And she says, Cheyenne, it wasn't that bad. We just didn't have running water for four years. It's not like it was forever. <laughs> and they lived in a very teeny tiny little town of only 1,200 people. And his parents loved music. And his mother taught him how to play the guitar. And when he started school at a very young age, he always felt like an outsider. And he found this safe, special place in music. He grew up in a very religious household. He attended a non-dominational church. His parents were very active in the community and the church. His father served in the Vietnam War. Everyone loved him. And his parents, he loved them so much. He grew up in a very loving, close-knit family. And he and his brother were sent off to a small private Christian academy named House of the Lord Christian Academy. Then when he got older, and he was old enough, he was able to go off to the city and go to the big high school. And when he got there, he felt like a whole world opened up to him. He found this special safe place in an even bigger world of music. He was able to join the school show choir, the chorus, and the theater group. But he still said he felt like an outsider. The summer he turned 13, he had a growth spurt. And when school started, the football coach took one look at him and said, Cheyenne, you need to be on the football team. And before he could give the coach an answer, the coach said, I'm going to call your dad. I'm going to call your dad and have him bring you to a football practice. So his dad got the call from the coach, and he took Cheyenne to watch the other boys play football. He was dreading this moment. He knew that he couldn't play football. He wanted to sing. But more importantly, he knew that he was different. He knew that he was gay, and he didn't know how to tell his father. He told all of us this story in such a beautiful way that when we were all sitting on this pool deck, it was so quiet. And he continued. He and his dad went to the school, and they sat down on a hill overlooking the field, and they watched football practice. And his heart started to sink. And he felt very ashamed. He knew that he was going to have to tell his father the truth that he had kept hidden so dark down deep, so far inside of him. He kept looking at his dad. He kept looking at the field. He kept looking at the players. And then just as he was about to speak and say what was in his head, in his heart, his father turned to him and smiled and put his hand on his son's shoulder and said, it's OK. His dad said, it's OK. 
you don't have to play football. He said, you don't have to be like everybody else. He told his son, it's okay. He said, it's okay that you're gentle. It's okay that you are kind. And it's okay that you don't want to play like that. He said, just be yourself. And he told us how they sat on this hill together. And then his father said, the world is going to be so cruel, but I promise you, it won't define who you are. So they went home. Cheyenne never played football, but he did sing. And later in his life, he wrote this song just titled, OK, to tell the story of his dad, of acceptance and love. So we all listened as he sang this beautiful song, OK. And I began to think to myself, this is just two letters, an O and a K, a very small word that summed up so much love, understanding, acceptance, all the gifts that God had bestowed upon us through his love. And now Cheyenne Jackson was experiencing that same love from his dad, acceptance and complete unconditional love like a mustard seed. It doesn't take much to share the love and faith that Jesus calls us into. It can be done with a small word, a simple gesture, a small something that tells those in our life that we love them no matter what. And that's why I wanted to share this story. We know this familiar parable of the mustard seed the smallest of seeds that if you threw it here or there, it would grow with great abundance. But sometimes, sometimes what happens is when we hear a story over and over again, we don't always hold on to it anymore. And one of my jobs as a priest is to figure out a way to communicate a familiar story in scripture in a different new way. And this new way is a reminder to all of us that we don't have to do very much to share the love of God. Just saying okay is often all we need. The mustard seed can serve as a reminder to all of us that God, God doesn't expect big gestures or over-the-top productions to share his message. Just being present, holding a hand, saying a prayer, a father laying his hand on his son's shoulder and saying, it's okay, you're okay. That's enough. And when we can't find the words, just showing up can say so much. When I heard this story from Cheyenne Jackson, it helped me to recall the moments in my life when I have received unconditional love, when my faith and that love got me through the hardest of times. And that is what we could take away from the gospel. The moment when we knew we were loved for exactly who we are and who we were to become, when we stopped having to pretend to be someone else or live our life for someone else because we were scared to be ourselves. I was always trying to be this perfect priest, figuring out the right way to do something or even the better way to do it. Always thinking I had to do more, it had to be better. I had to become this idea of, of what a priest was supposed to be. And it took me years to realize I had to be my authentic self, especially in the pulpit if I was gonna be faithful to God, which meant that if I preached with my hands going all over the place, and if I threw a song in now or then, if I speak from my own life experiences and how I live out my faith, then I would become the person, the priest that God called me to be. With all of my faults, with all my mistakes, ups and downs, at the end of the day, all of us, every one of us is like the mustard seed. We have been created by God. And wherever we land, if we are faithful and authentic 
to who we are as a loving creation of God, that big or small, we are loved. And there is such freedom in that. The freedom of letting go and living into the person that God created allows us, in turn, to share that with each other, that same faith and acceptance and love. So today, let's ask ourselves, when was your mustard seed moment? When were you accepted, accepted completely for who you are? And when did you realize that God loved you unconditionally? And when did we begin to share that same love with each other unconditionally? When was that moment when someone simply said, it's okay, you're okay? God does that for us every single day. And now is the time that we are called to do it for each other. Those small moments, that's what builds up the kingdom of God. Wherever we go, wherever we scatter our faith, each of us are building up the kingdom of God. And it began with the smallest of seeds. Amen.